We're working on auditing and CMK support for SQL database in Fabric. Learn all about it this week on Data Exposed. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed. Today, we are getting right into some exciting new updates that are coming soon to SQL Database and Fabric. So before we get into it, you want to check the link in the description to see if these are public preview yet. Um, but right now, we're going to cover what's coming soon. I have Stravani and Peter from the SQL PM team. Uh, thanks so much, you guys, for coming back on Data Exposed. Uh, we are going to get right into it by talking about auditing. Uh, so Stravani... Uh, we'd love to learn a little bit more about auditing for SQL DB and Fabric. Thanks, Anna. Thanks for having me here. Uh, yeah, so aud SQL auditing uh, is a feature which is available for uh, all SQL Server products like Azure SQL, SQL Server, SQL Managed Instance, and now it's coming for Fabric as well. Uh, auditing is an important feature, as you are aware, it's required for security and compliance. Auditing is the only source of truth when something goes wrong in the database. It helps you to capture all activities in the database, like data reads, data writes, uh, schema changes, permission changes, who access the database. And not only that, it helps you to meet uh, uh, compliance, like HIPAA, SOX. Uh, you can also use audit logs for threat analysis and monitoring database activities. So it's like a, a must feature for the enterprise databases. Uh, for uh, Fabric, when we designed auditing, we ensured we address all the feedback that we had from customers. Uh, so you can just manage the auditing for Fabric database just from the portal. Uh, we have default and custom audit configurations supported end-to-end. -end. Uh, audit logs are stored in one lake, which is the unified storage for uh, Fabric. We, we write audit logs into a read-only folder, which makes it immutable. Uh, so only the database artifact can delete the logs when the retention expires. Admins, members, contributors, no one can delete the audit logs from the folder, making it immutable. You can also manage retention and predicate expressions just from the portal. Uh, we support uh, T-SQL functions to query the audit logs along with uh, the logs which can be viewed and downloaded from the OneDeck client. Uh, there is a permission-based access which is aligned with the Fabric model. Uh, with the UI integration, you can manage permissions to configure audit logs and query the audit logs. At the custom audit configurations, uh, we support various options. I'm going to show it in the demo. Uh, so this is the access control for audit logs in Fabric SQL DB. So we are aligned with the Fabric uh, access control model. So we support workspace level roles, which is admin member contributor and viewer. So based on the permissions that they have, admins, members, and contributors, they can configure the audit logs for the database in Fabric. They can also view the audit logs using the T-SQL functions. They can view, view the audit logs in one lake. Uh, there are SQL access controls to achieve more uh, granular level permissions, like view database security audit, which helps you to view the audit logs with this permission. And you also have alter any database audit, which allows you to configure audit logs and change the auditing configuration. There is a permission called control database. With that, you can do both view audit logs and configure audit logs. For example, if you have a persona called auditor who had to uh, view the audit logs but should not have access to any of the data in your database, you can achieve that with a combination of fabric level workspace role and SQL level access controls. Like add the auditor as a viewer at the workspace and grant them permissions, view database security audit so that they can access the audit logs. With this combination of both workspace and SQL level access controls, you can monitor and manage your complete auditing solution end to end. Let me quickly take you to the demo. Awesome. I'm excited okay. to see it. And it seems like a capability, you know, of course, every database, uh, enterprise database needs auditing. So it's really exciting that this is coming really soon uh, so to SQL DB and Fabric. But yeah, I'd love to take a look. Absolutely, Anna. And not only that, we, we improvise the UI experience for customers. You can do everything just from the portal. Auditing for SQL database can be managed at the database level. 
uh, under security, you have managed SQL auditing blade. So here you can see that currently the setting is set to audit everything, which means we kind of capture every batch in your database. This aligns with the default auditing settings that we have in Azure SQL. Uh, so in case customers have to meet certain compliances, this is the safest to apply so that every batch that is executed in your database is audited. However, if you feel that it's noisy, you don't have compliance to meet, you have other security requirements to capture audit logs. That is when customers can switch to custom auditing just from the portal. For custom auditing, we are supporting these pre-configured scenarios like you can audit permission changes, login attempts, audit data rates and rights, audit schema changes. These are some of the initial scenarios that we have a support in. And if we get any feedback from customers, we can add more custom scenarios here. So you can simply choose any of these custom scenarios for custom auditing. Let's say you do not want to use these pre-configured scenarios and if your organization has a specific security requirements to capture certain action groups like banking sectors, they have their own set of action groups that needs to be captured to meet their security requirements. In that scenario, you can simply choose the required set of action groups just from the portal and you can save your custom auditing setting. So this way you can switch from the default auditing, which is audit everything to custom auditing. You can also manage retention just from the portal. By default, it is infinite. Audit logs are stored forever. Based on your uh, security standards, best practices, you can set the retention as well. We also support predicate expressions from the portal. This is to filter the audit logs. You can filter specific statements like dynamic SQL or a specific user schema or objects just from the portal. So with this, uh, like I mentioned, admins, members, contributors uh, can manage auditing settings for your database just from the Fabric portal. And if you do not have to audit your database, you can just turn off the auditing anytime. So once you save the audit settings, the logs are stored in one lake. Uh, like I said, the unified storage for Fabric and the logs are stored inside your one lake under workspace ID and the artifact folder. Uh, we create a folder called audit, which is a read-only folder to make it immutable. So the logs can be queried using the T-SQL functions. Simply, you can just run your T-SQL queries using the Fabric query editor, and you can, you can review the audit logs just using the T-SQL function. You can see that I'm just trying to look at operations that are performed against customer accounts table. And I can see there is a create table that is happened, insert, update. So you can review your audit logs just using the T-SQL functions. Along with this, you can also have a uh, one lake client installed. And inside one lake client, you can uh, check your audit logs. So this is my one lake. And inside my one lake, I can see that there is an audit folder created. And this is the same structure that we follow for Azure SQL as well. With the date wise, you can see all the XCL files are sitting in the one lake folder, which can be downloaded and processed further based on your requirements. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool that you can just navigate them just using File Explorer. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Well, it's great to learn about uh, auditing, Srivani. I'm super excited for this to be coming soon to SQL DB and Fabric. Um, anything yeah. else on auditing before we move to CMK? I uh, know. That's all. Awesome. Well, great. Thanks start so much. using auditing. Yeah. yeah, start using it. Assuming it's available, <laughs> check the link in the description to find out. <laughs> yeah. um, next, we're going to move on to CMK. Uh, Peter, uh, thanks so much for joining us. Um, tell us about yep. customer managed keys. Yes, I will. Um, so let's talk a little bit about customer managed keys and um, encryption at rest in Fabric SQL database. So what is customer managed key? Um, by default, Microsoft, we encrypt all your data at rest uh, in Microsoft Fabric, right? And to do that, we're using a Microsoft Managed Key or MMK. Now, in some particular cases, our customers, they don't like that we manage our keys and they want to be uh, in uh, full control, right? So um, we now allow customers to configure a customer managed key on a workspace level, which basically is going to encrypt all the artifacts that are part of that specific uh, workspace. And what is coming soon is that we're also going to encrypt um, Fabric SQL databases uh, that are part of the, the workspace that has CMK enabled. So it gives the customers the full ownership and the control of uh, encryption keys 
that will protect their sensitive data. So we are no longer in control. It's the customer that manages uh, the key. So this is currently general available uh, on workspace level. So uh, for the viewers or the customers that are familiar with Azure SQL database, there we have a technology which is called transparent data encryption, which is basically what we are also using for Fabric SQL database. So once you've enabled CMK, we're going to enable transparent data encryption on all the databases in your workspace, which means we're going to protect your data at rest. Um, in Azure SQL, that is enabled by default, uh, not in Fabric. And um, it's completely transparent. What it means that uh, we're just enabling it for you in the background. Uh, there's no need for you to make any changes in your applications. You won't even notice that um, transparent data encryption is enabled, right? Um, so basically what we're doing is when you need to write something to the disk before it is written to the disk, we're going to encrypt it. And the other way around, if we need to read something from the disk before it is loaded into memory, it's going to be um, decrypted. So it's, yeah, like I said, completely transparent. And on top of that, um, it, we're also going to encrypt your backup files, your database files, your transactional log files with that same key. So without that key, um, everything gets, yeah, it's just unusable, right? So a little bit more technical, how does it work? So we have our uh, Fabric SQL database and uh, the Fabric SQL database is using a database encryption key or a DEC. And it's actually that DEC that is doing the decryption and the uh, encryption of your data. Now that database encryption key uh, is, on, is encrypted by what we call the TD protector, which is actually the customer managed key that you have configured on your workspace level, right? Um, under the covers, so uh, the storage is still encrypted, but on top of that, your Fabric SQL data, uh, data is also protected by um, transparent data encryption. All right. Let me quickly show you how it works. It's, it's fairly easy. Um, so this is a uh, workspace that I have called Data Exposed. And in that workspace, I have just one uh, single SQL database called MySQLDB. First step that you need to do is enable CMK on the workspace that is done in the workspace settings. So you click on the workspace settings, you go to encryption. Uh, you need to enable your workspace. And the only thing that you need to do is you need to um, configure your key identifier, which is basically a key that you have configured in your Azure Key Vault, right? So once you've configured it, um, we're going to start encrypting everything that is part of that workspace. And once we're done, you will get a status active, just like here, right? Um, this means that now um, my SQL database is also encrypted. And to prove that, um, I just go to the query editor. And if you query this DMV called DN database encryption keys, you will notice here that um, my database is encrypted with an AS256 asymmetric key, um, which is basically, again, the CMK on the workspace level. And the status of my database is encrypted and the yeah, encryption scan is complete. So this yeah, really proves that on top of the storage encryption, we also have a TD enabled um, on that specific database, right? Like I said, this is um, currently general available on workspace level, but we're now introducing uh, the encryption of SQL database as well. Awesome. Great. Um, thanks so much, Peter. I learned a lot and I love just to see the confirmation that it's all there. Um, so yeah. folks joining us, uh, we learned today about auditing and CMK for SQL to be in Fabric, hopefully landing very shortly. So uh, please check the links in the description uh, to see if this has landed. And if it has, then we'd love for you to go check it out and give us your feedback. Uh, if you like this episode, go ahead, give it a like, leave us a comment, let us know what you're using these for or if you like them. And we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed.